Good morning. My name is Susan Bresser, the pastor of First United Methodist Church in Whitewater, Wisconsin. It's good to have you with us in worship today. It's always good to come together, even from a distance. I do want to thank our worship leaders today, Chris Cameron, Jim Athos, Barb Taylor, and Katie Fortney. I am grateful for their faithful participation. And I want to make sure that we thank our tech crew, Broderick Fry, Joe Sherman, and Chuck Taylor, as they work so very hard behind the scenes to connect us. I'm, gratitude for all, I'm so grateful for all of these folks as they offer their gifts and their service in ministry. Today, we will be greeted virtually by John and Amy Howers and Julie Duvall. John and Amy are primetime leaders, leaders of our senior high youth ministry, and Julie is the chairperson of our staff parish relations committee. They greet you today saying thank you saying thank you for the ways that you have supported the church. They also greet you to tell you how much they miss you. By the end of the season of Lent, all of the staff of First Church and those in leadership positions will have offered a virtual greeting to you. Today we are also recognizing and saying goodbye to Tim and Lisa Adebacher. So you'll be seeing a few other faces that you haven't seen in a while as they virtually offer their greetings to Tim and Lisa and to all of you, as well as offering gratitude for Tim and Lisa's service in ministry and prayers and blessings for Tim and Lisa's move to northern Wisconsin. We are still collecting cards and notes for the Ottobachers, so if you wish to include words of gratitude and words of care, you can send those to the church office. If you wish to email your notes of blessing to the Ottobachers, you can do so by emailing Jane Haskey at her church email address. We will make sure that all of these greetings, all of these cards and notes will reach the Ottobachers. I do want to let you know that the worship planning team is working hard to prepare meaningful Holy Week worship services and a glorious Easter morning worship service. I, I invite you and encourage you to remain in touch with the church through the weekly messenger as we will be providing updates in the coming weeks as we do our best to both care for you in, in a time of a pandemic, as well as provide meaningful worship opportunities. Today we recognize and take a moment of silence to honor and remember the 500,000 lives lost to COVID. We passed this horrible milestone on Monday, February 22nd. More than half a million Americans dead from COVID. There are now more lives lost in the United States to this virus than any other nation in the world. As people of faith, we don't and we won't dwell on death but we do acknowledge grief and loss. To do this as a human community is very important. And we know to do so in a public way has been very difficult as it is simply not yet safe to gather in large community. We face the prospect of becoming numb to the sorrow for it's very difficult to comprehend the loss of over 500,000 lives. But we must resist this as best we can. For each death represents an individual life, an individual person, loved by God and made in God's image. It's imperative to take time to grieve for those who have died and to remember the loved ones who are left behind. 
We cannot, nor, nor should we simply move on, simply move past. Individual and collective mourning is a critical part of how we process, how we remember, and how we heal. Perhaps the most heartbreaking fact about reaching over 500,000 deaths is that the death toll is still rising. Though new infections and hospitalizations are slowing after a mid-winter peak and the number of vaccinations is increasing, thanks be to God, we still have a long way to go to end this pandemic. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation is now forecasting that the United States may surpass 600,000 deaths by June. This is why First Church hasn't yet gathered for in-person worship. This is why we practice do no harm. This is why we wear masks and encourage you to do the same. This is how we are loving one another from a distance. I invite us to take a moment of silence to remember the growing number of those lives lost to COVID. When we remember, we are asking God to bring us together even from a distance. Let us be in silence. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give thanks for your unfailing presence. We give thanks for the hope you provide in these times of uncertainty and loss. We come before you as a grieving nation, as a grieving community, and as individuals with broken hearts. Whether or not we have directly experienced the pain of losing someone to COVID, there is still an indescribable spirit of sorrow that has fallen upon us. And so we pray that you will strengthen the families and the friends who remain behind to comfort one another and to wipe the tears from our eyes. We pray that you will strengthen our community and our family of faith as we stand together during this time of sorrow, incomprehension, and tragedy. We know your love is steadfast, always there when we need it. Let our nation and our community feel your presence now. Help us to look to tomorrow to see hope beyond grief through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May we find hope in God's promise that nothing will separate us from God's love, neither death nor life. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Good morning. I am Christopher Cameron and I am your liturgist today. Hear now the call to worship. God Almighty speaks to us. God Almighty calls us each by name. God Almighty is faithful to every one of us the same. God Almighty blesses us. God Almighty is true. God Almighty loves us. God loves me and God loves you. Then let us worship God alone in faithfulness and hope. For God Almighty has kept God's word. We are ever in God's scope. Welcome to worship. Let us pray. Eternal God, holy and faithful, what can we give in return for our life? Teach us to take up the cross of Christ with grateful hearts and humble spirits, offering all for the sake of the gospel so that we may receive life of fullness through Christ our Lord, amen. Oh! 
morning, I'm Amy Howers. And I'm John Howers. And we've been members of FUMC since 2002. Over those years, we've served in a number of different roles. Currently, we are serving as half of the primetime youth leaders. We miss our church family. We miss worshiping with you. We miss coffee hour. We miss um, Sunday night youth group and being with the kids. As a family, over this past year, we've had a chance to grow. Uh, we've slowed our pace. We've taken each day one day at a time. It's helped us to see God in the everyday things that we were just letting pass us by. And we know that this too shall pass. And until we can all worship together again as a family, we wish you good health and happiness. Hi, my name is Julie Duvall, and I'm the chair for the Staff Parish Relations Committee at First United Methodist Church. I want to thank you for your faithfulness through these challenging times. It has been difficult in many different ways for all of us. I pray for God to wrap his arms around you and make sure that you know that you're loved. The Lord blessed me with an amazing church family, which I miss greatly. I know through my faith, God is clearing a path. So I'm waiting patiently until we meet together in God's house worshiping. Peace and God be with you. Here now a reading from the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us a spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened to know your truth and your way. Amen. A spirit animal is characterized as a teacher or a messenger that comes in the form of an animal and has a personal relationship to an individual. My spirit animal is the otter. Playful, spontaneous, impulsive. And my spirit disciple is Peter. Spontaneous, impulsive, impetuous. Actually, Peter is our spirit disciple, all of us, not just mine. Peter represents us. In today's scripture story, Jesus tries to tell Peter that the Messiah must suffer, be rejected and killed, and then rise again. Peter is not at all convinced. He thinks Jesus has lost his mind. He takes Jesus aside to, to call him out on all of this crazy craziness, you know, so Jesus doesn't lose face in front of the other disciples, which results, of course, in Peter getting called out by Jesus in front of the disciples. 
Get out of my way, Jesus says. For like Satan, you are trying to offer me an alternative to what God wants. You're thinking like everyone else, Peter, not like God. You've got your head wrapped around human things. That head of yours needs to be wrapped around divine things. And then Jesus turns to the crowd. If any of you want to come with me, you have to deny yourself. Forget yourself. Carry your cross and follow me. If you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for me and for the gospel, you will save it. I feel for Peter. I really do. Because after all, he's just saying what everyone else is thinking. The Messiah is supposed to fight to free the people from Roman occupation. The Messiah is supposed to lead a military triumph. The Messiah will be humiliated if he suffers and dies. Peter's view of messiahship is really all about Peter. The terms Jesus lays out, well, those aren't really acceptable, not to Peter. They're a little too risky and a little too costly. Peter means well. He does. He cares so very much. He cares so very much for Jesus. He loves Jesus. Well, he loves what he thinks Jesus represents. And then what happens? All of Peter's hopes and dreams and expectations are squashed. He's got to be thinking, haven't the people of God experienced enough hardship? Isn't it time to do battle? Isn't it time to win? Why in the world are we talking about more pain and loss? For us, this is our second Lenten season in a pandemic. We started the pandemic, we started the pandemic in the season of Lent, and here we are back again in the season of Lent. Peter's words, Peter's thoughts are so understandable. Haven't we had enough? Haven't we had enough suffering? Haven't we had enough loss? Haven't we had enough grief and fear? Isn't it time to win? Why is Jesus still inviting us to die in order to live and to lose? in order to save. Peter just wants to keep Jesus safe. And in keeping Jesus safe, Peter keeps himself safe. Peter just wants to preserve the life of Jesus and his own life and to figure out a more reasonable way for Jesus to be the Messiah. But what he doesn't understand is that the life of Jesus doesn't have limits. That the more Jesus pours out his life, the more he has to share. What Peter doesn't understand and what we sometimes have a hard time getting our human heads wrapped around is that Life is not meant to be bottled or saved or preserved. It is always meant to be poured out. When Brent and I found out that we were pregnant with baby number two, our daughter Eva, she's two and a half years younger than our firstborn, we had a moment of great fear. Wondering about our ability to love another child. 
we seriously asked, will we have enough love to go around? How can we love another child as much as we love our first? But then we learned. We learned the power of the math of unconditional love. (laughs) The more you give, the more you share, the more you have. (laughs) Divine math 101. The more you give, the more you share, the more you have. Brent and I had enough, more than enough. Enough even for four kids. (laughs) More than enough to go around. Wanting to hold on to what is safe and comfortable is understandable. And we can relate to the denial of brokenness, of pain, and of death. And really, really, no wonder Peter is confused and frustrated. He knew where to look for God, and it was in the places of strength. For this reason, he could only imagine that grief and loss, suffering and death, were things to be avoided because they seemed to be, to him, quite literally, God-forsaken. Peter could only wrap his head around human things, almost and always asking, what about me? Certainly what we are learning in and through this pandemic is that it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the collective us. It's about entering into the brokenness, into the pain, and into the suffering of others. Not to explain it away, not in an attempt to fit it into some larger plan, not to ignore it altogether, but to trust that God is present in the midst of the brokenness, working for and calling us to life. The one thing that unifies us the most in the human community is that we all experience brokenness. Of course, we have the tendency to deny this, Because we live in a culture that promotes strength and health and self-sufficiency. But if we learn anything from Jesus, it's that we are called to deny our selfish selves. To wrap our heads around the divine things. To take up our cross, expecting that God is fully present in the suffering and in the brokenness of the world. Because of this, we are called to enter into the brokenness of others, into the brokenness of the world. Jesus Jesus modeled that for us. He chose to give in a world that takes, to love in a world that hates, to heal in a world that injures, to give life in a world that kills. He offered mercy when others were downright horrible. He offered forgiveness when others condemned, and he offered compassion when others were indifferent. He trusted in the divine math of God's abundance when others said there wasn't enough. With each choice, Jesus denied himself and showed that God was indeed present. Earlier in our worship service, we were reminded of the suffering of more than 500,000 people who have died from COVID. Those 500,000 
Actually, today it's more than 510,000. All those people leave behind families, friends, loved ones, communities, church families. We really do face the possibility of becoming numb to such staggering sorrow and grief. Like Peter, we might say, this can't be. This, this isn't really happening. We just, we just need to move on. Or we might say, this really inconveniences me. I don't like wearing a mask. Or this really cramps my style. I don't like not being able to see my family. So we just need to move on. We can't. We can't, nor should we just move on. We are called to hold the suffering of our nation and of our world on our hearts, proclaiming a God that loves us through it all. And the way we love and care for others in the suffering of the world? By doing all that is recommended. Wearing masks, keeping our distance, getting vaccinated when it's our turn. But also calling our loved ones, offering a listening ear, sending notes, offering encouragement, being grateful thanking others for their service, being creative with outreach and response, praying, singing, seeking joy and purpose, denying ourselves and wrapping our heads around divine things is not about being powerless or weak or ineffective. It is about the choices we make. And when we discover that God is fully present in our individual and our collective brokenness, it transforms how we look at everything else. And it encourages us in the struggle of life. After all, if loss and suffering and death cannot separate us from God's love, what then is there to fear? So let us grow in this understanding that there is always more life and love to go around when our life and our love is rooted in the life and in the love of Jesus. Because even as we pour ourselves out for the sake of others, even as we risk and sacrifice and give ourselves away, the divine math says that the life we save will be our own. And if that's the only growth we experience this week, may it be enough for all of us. Amen.
Tim and Lisa Adebacher are leaving Whitewater after many, many years of making Whitewater and First United Methodist Church their home. They now have the awesome opportunity to live with Tim's mom, Helen, in northern Wisconsin. As difficult as it is to leave a place they love, they are looking forward to the family life they will experience with Helen. This community, First Church, and all of Warm, are so very grateful for the many years of treasured friendship with the Ottobachers and for all of Tim and Lisa's care, compassion, and faithful servant ministry. If we were meeting in person, we would be surrounding Tim and Lisa. We would be offering our hands to hold. We would be offering our shoulders to lean on. We would be offering much love through our physical touch. But today, virtually, we surround Tim and Lisa with our love and our gratitude, even from a distance, asking God to bless their journey and to fill them with love and grace. Hey, Otterbachers. Uh, congratulations on the beginning of this new chapter in your life. Um, I know you will be missed uh, around here in Whitewater, um, but I know you won't be strangers. So, um, But I just want to say thank you for being such great role models um, as friends, um, as members of the church, and also uh, in all the mission trips that we took together. I know we've created uh, countless memories uh, throughout the years, and I will cherish those um, forever. Um, and uh, again, congratulations on the beginning of this new chapter in your life. Um, I know I'll be seeing you around. Uh, thank you for being you, and uh, until next time. Hey, Tim and Lisa. Um, I'm so happy that I have this opportunity to thank you for everything that you've done for me, for this community, for the church. Um, I'm sure there are many other people uh, who are thanking you, but you have impacted me in a way that is almost indescribable. I was, uh, 11 years ago, I was just a kid from East Troy, a little stick of dynamite who was looking for a home to belong, uh, some, some people uh, that I could call family and, and friends. And you took me under your wing and uh, you gave me that. And you, you made me a part of your family. I've been on uh, trips, mission trips with you. I've, I've been up to, to Whitehall with you and, and across the country. And you've taught me so much about myself and who, who I'm supposed to be. Um, you've helped to mold me in my character and, um, you've helped me along with my faith and, uh, that that gift is is priceless. Um, I want to thank you, Lisa, for showing me what a leader, a, a calm, strong leader can look like. You have such a an amazing faith that I aspire to, um, and I can't count how many times that you have brought me to tears because of the words that you say. I I'm firmly believe that the Holy Spirit speaks through you, um, and that is truly a gift and has changed my life um, for sure. And, and Timmy, all of the talks that I've been able to have with you, and, and you really helped to model what a, a man should do and a man should be. Um, your relationship with Lisa has has definitely impacted what my relationship with Lauren is like and what a great dad um, and a great leader can look like. And you, you've both modeled that. 
um, that leadership, that that ability to impact others beyond yourself, and for no reward is is um, pretty remarkable. Um, thank you for taking the time with me. Um, thank you for loving me and and taking me in a, as one of your own, and for for all the other kids who you know you have helped along the way um you know i'm i'm sure they can't thank you enough either um i appreciate the both of you so much um thank you for all of the after church meals uh thank you for all of the long talks on uh, mission trips thank you for inviting me into your home um thank you for uh keeping me in line and keeping me alive um when that was needed also um you both have tremendous gifts and i'm so blessed to um be able to have known you uh, for as long as i have and to be impacted by you and in, in hopes that i can impact others so thank you. I love you. I, I wish the best for the both of you down the road, and we'll see you soon. Hey, Tim and Lisa. It's Cheyenne. I wanted to thank you for all the time and all the love that you gave to the youth group, as well as your faithful leadership that has made such an impact in all of our lives. Um, you will be greatly missed in Whitewater, but enjoy Northern Wisconsin. They're lucky to have you. Dear Tim and Lisa, Wow, what good friends you have been. Not just good friends, but neighbors. I so appreciated having you near, near me out at the lake. You were so, so helpful and uh, did so many things with primetime kids to help with wood moving and trimming and, um, and things over by the lake where David was. We all appreciated so much your attention and your love that you gave to David. I know he was just so overwhelmed by how wonderful you were. And uh, really, the rest of the family really appreciated all of the meals and all of the jaunts that you took him on and uh, all of the visits that you had with him at Fairhaven. So we're grateful for that. And I was really happy that you both went on our, our trip to the Holy Land last year. That was just wonderful to have you along. And uh, I hope that it was as much as you expected. And uh, we had some good, good ice cream every night at the ice cream shop. But um, it was good to, to be able to share that experience with you. And I learned a long time ago that it's not to say goodbye, but see you later, because I hope that you will come back to Whitewater and visit and uh, let us know that you're doing okay. Wonderful that you're going to stay with Tim's mom, uh, <clears throat> but just know how much you're going to be missed. Lots of love. Tim and Lisa, I wanted to come down from the booth up there and stand here in the pulpit and preach to you for just a minute. You know, I'm sad that you're leaving us, but I know it's the best thing that you must do. And you know, God, I feel, put us on this earth to create memories. And you have given me, in the 20 years that we've known each other, many unforgettable memories of things in the past. Um, you know, working with the youth programs, uh, the Boundary Water trips, what exciting times we had on those. And um, I know for sure that we'll be up to see you in the North Woods uh, very soon and um, hope that possibly this fall we maybe can get together and do a, another canoe trip in the fall. And uh, 
And but I will call before we do come up because so you have some of your blueberry dessert ready for me when we get there. And Tim, I want to thank you so much for teaching me how to cook sweet corn. That was very important now in my life from the going on further. So I hope that you all have a wonderful time. Take care. Take care of your mother. And uh, God bless you all. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Tim and Lisa, on behalf of Methodist Church, uh, we would like to thank you, um, but not say goodbye for all that has happened over the years. As we have grown up in the church, uh, we want to thank you for being part of that and let you know that the whole church family thanks you as well for what you have done, how you have served, and the love you have shown. It started being Sunday school teachers, the many children Christmas programs, the summer Bible school, the middle school chaperones, confirmation, confirmation chaperones, um, mentors, then to middle school convo, to prime time, to mission trips, Bible studies, and to leadership committees in the church. All of these moments we did together. As Walt Disney once said, it's not in the days of the life we remember, rather the moments. Our faith has grown much like our families. The challenge that we each faced, we have overcome through faith in Christ. We remember when we would pray for these amazing things that we have now, such as our health, happiness, love, and family. Yesterday brought the beginning, tomorrow brings the end. Through somewhere in the middle, we became best friends. There were many things that we had to ask for forgiveness after we had done it but that's okay because we are a family. Our memories of yesterday will last a lifetime. We'll take the best, forget the rest, and someday we'll find that these are the best of times. Love you guys. Love you. Good morning, I'm Chuck Taylor. Tim and Lisa, I've known you for so long and in so many contexts that it's hard to know where to start. You've both given so much to the youth of this church, especially those of high school age when you were the youth leaders. You both served the community for many years as committed, respected law enforcement officers, as well as being emergency medical technicians in your spare time. You've both been faithful ushers on Sunday morning with cheerful greeting for those who entered God's house. Although Lisa's greetings were sometimes so cheerful that she only had time to greet one or two through two people, she was so interested in what people were doing and who they were. These are only a few of the items on a long, long list, but the bottom line is that you've both been pillars of the church and of the community, and it's very, very hard to say goodbye. As a church, we wish you Godspeed, but surely you will be sorely missed. We love you. Visit often. Greetings to a wonderful church family. We want to thank you for 23 years of having a great church family and making many memories and making many, many friends, which we will greatly miss. We've decided to take on a uh, different adventure and go up and uh, live and help my mom on a beautiful piece of property up north. And uh, we just wanted to wish you all the best. You've been a very important part of our life, and uh, may God bless you all. We just wanted to say goodbye. Thank you for all of the memories, all the experiences, and so many opportunities to learn and grow together in God. So we will miss you all. Um, we'll see you uh, plenty of times on our visits, but uh, just a new chapter, and we're excited about it. We're going to miss you all so much. Lots of hugs from uh, all of us, from the Otterbacher family, to include Kaylee and Calvin, and thank you for touching our lives in ways that we could never imagine not having. God bless. God bless. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.
United by the common recognition of Jesus Christ as our Savior, we all belong to one another. We are siblings in the family of God. And for a time, First United Methodist Church is our home. Like every human family, our church family is formed and reformed over time. As members are born, as they die as members are adopted into our family, and as they leave our congregation for a new home in a different place. For a time, Tim and Lisa Ottebacher have lived with us. We have shared with each other good times and bad. We have shared each other's joys and sorrows. We have lightened each other's heavy loads. Together we have laughed and cried. Together we have worshipped and praised God. Together we have lived. Tim and Lisa, we feel sorrow in your leaving. Yet we rejoice with you in anticipation of this new phase of your life. What a blessing that Helen will have a loving family surrounding her and caring for her. We will miss your love and support. Yet, we know you will add much to the lives of those who will be your new church family, as you have added much to our lives. 
I invite us all to be in a time of prayer. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the wide and wonderful world in which we live. We thank you for your constant care for those who have trusted you in ages past, who journeyed in faith to new lands of promise. We trust that now you will hold Tim and Lisa securely in your hands as they too follow your call to a new place. May they take with them hearts filled with your love and grace, that those with whom they live and work may see in them the face of Jesus Christ. Bless them, that they may be a blessing. Guide them to a new church home, where they may continue to grow in grace, in spirit, and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Tim and Lisa, you will be missed. Go in the peace of Christ and know that our prayers go with you. Amen. Let us pray. God, in this unholy mess that we call life, you are always with us. We are grateful for your presence. And God, you are always calling us to faithfulness and to trust, to deny our selfish ways, to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Oh God, we just pray that you will provide strength for our journey. On this day and in this time of prayer, we offer to you those who are grieving, especially the Korf family. We offer to you those who are facing surgery, Terry and Ellie. We offer those to you who are healing. Ruth and Nancy and Pastor Don and many others. God, on this day we offer before you those who are celebrating. <laughs> Happy birthday to one of our favorite retired pastors, Dory. And today we offer to you the care of our dear friends, Tim and Lisa, Praying that you will pour blessing upon blessing on their lives. Our hearts are forever grateful for their service, for their friendship, and for the many, many ways they modeled such strong commitment to a life with Christ. In the warmth of spring's approach, we feel your presence. In the moonlight of winter's night, we feel your presence. In the silence of mourning and grieving, oh, we breathe in your presence. We are grateful, God, that you are with us in the ordinary moments of life. But we are so very, very grateful that we can experience the divine moments as well. God in community, holy in one. May we see you, hear you, and know you as we move through this Lenten season. And may we grow closer to you and closer in faith. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our mission into the world. When I leave this place, I am going into the community where people need a kind, caring, encouraging word. And God's sending me to get the word out. The joy and peace in this life comes in sharing what I have received. So I go in peace to experience the joy in the name of the living God who lives in Jesus and who empowers me to be a witness through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our benediction. With faith, remember the good news. The Spirit of Christ accompanies us. This is not an abstract claim. This is a promise that God still takes on flesh. When we act out of our sacred potential, Christ is alive in our depths, our flesh, our communities. Turning from evil's hopes of our complicity and complacency, let us go emboldened, encouraged, and assured. The power of God lives in us. May it be so. Amen. Thank you.